Hello YouTube, this is Frillo. I'm still rocking my new copper farm a lot, so naturally we'll have to talk about copper aging. If you watch YouTube or follow Reddit, it appears the best way to age copper is to spread it out in a 5x5 block grid. And while this is certainly the fastest way if you look at a single block, I would argue it's by far not the best way for large amounts. So ladies and gentlemen, this is officially the way to oxidize copper in large quantities. Of course you have been told that this doesn't work and you're right, but the secret source is another layer of oxidized copper below. There are a few other layouts that are faster, but we'll come to that. Now, single copper blocks will age all three stages to oxidize in roughly one hour on average. This setup here takes longer, but let's say I do an overnight AFK session in my farm. This is how my copper looks after roughly eight hours. And Light Medica tells me that way over 90% of the blocks that I laid out eight hours ago have fully oxidized. And considering that this is three shaker boxes worth of oxidized copper, that's not a bad time, is it? And what surprises me is that apparently very few people know about this. And this is why I'm making this video, because this concept is by no means my idea. I found it in a video by Cubic Meter, but it seems no one really caught on. Perhaps, I don't know, because it was a bit buried in the presentation of a very impressive redstone aging machine. So this video is exclusively about manual copper aging, and ways to age copper fast, and I'd argue that it's much faster to lay out copper in phases and rows like this, instead of walking through a pretty large area and harvesting and laying out each copper block individually, which takes a long, long time. And I may design a machine to lay out and harvest the copper automatically. If we are talking about shaker boxes worth, it still takes a long time, especially to harvest all of the copper, because you can't insta mine it, even with haste too. Right now we will focus on the patterns and you don't need any machines or redstone knowledge to understand this video. So I will give you the rough idea first before we go into the nitty gritty details. It's true that copper ages very very slow if there are many copper blocks in the vicinity. But it's less known that we can mitigate this effect with aged copper blocks. We'll never be as fast as an isolated block, but we can get close. To give you a rough idea, we count all the blocks in the vicinity and vicinity in this video means all blocks that have a distance of 4 or less in taxicab or Manhattan distance. So all yellow glass blocks in this diamond structure that I have marked out here. Let's say we want to age this copper block here. And let's first consider a single layer. So at least 4 blocks below and above our layer are not copper blocks. Then we would count all of the copper blocks that have the same age. And on the other hand, we count all of the copper blocks that have a higher oxidation state. In this case, this could be exposed or weathered, but we will work with oxidized for now. And um, if we have roughly the same number as here, so we have 20 fresh copper blocks and 20 oxidized copper blocks, then the chance for this one copper block here to age is roughly one fourth or 25% of the chance that an isolated copper block ages. So a copper block that doesn't have any other copper blocks in the vicinity. And if we have a ratio of about one to two, like this, so we have 12 extra blocks of copper, but 26 oxidized copper, then the chance is more like 50% of an isolated block. Now this sounds low, but remember that we can lay out and break the copper, for example, in lines or even in full phases, which is much, much faster than running around and mine isolated blocks and place new ones. Now there is a snack, but it sounds worse in theory than it is in practice. If you have any block of lower oxidation state in the vicinity, then this will block all higher oxidized blocks from aging. So, in practice this means the single block of copper will prevent that any of the other blocks here would oxidize any further. Or if we think three-dimensional, all blocks in this diamond structure, so all these exposed copper blocks would stay exposed until finally this block is also exposed. But as you will see, this isn't too bad if we have large patches, and most importantly, if we have enough oxidized blocks around. So to summarize, laying out copper blocks on a 5x5x5 grid is always the fastest, but it takes a ton of time and space to place and break them. There are machines for this, most notably Pixel Riff's David machine, but they take a ton of space and are fairly complicated to build and you can't age too many blocks. Don't get me wrong, these are amazing machines and very creative redstone builds, but they strike me as having a lot of effort for a very moderate amount of copper they can handle. But you can lay out much larger patches of copper and oxidize it in a reasonable time, 
if you have a few oxidized copper blocks and mix them in. And we'll see that we get decent times with a 1 to 1 ratio, like this. So if we have two stacks of oxidized copper, then we can lump them together with two stacks of fresh copper. So let's have a look at a few patterns. We want to keep the pattern simple, because at one time we want to build a machine that creates this pattern. So I won't do anything too crazy. Here we do a 1 to 1 ratio every other row. Of course we will compare the isolated copper. We will also compare the solid copper without any oxidized blocker in the vicinity. This is a 1 out of 4 pattern. So 1 fresh copper for 3 oxidized copper. And we will have a look at a solid phase of fresh copper on a solid phase of oxidized copper. And for better visibility, so that you can easily see what the template was, I made a copy below where I used gold blocks instead of copper blocks. So this is kind of the pattern we start with. And also the game treats cut and uncut copper the same. So in all our patterns we will use uncut copper as the fresh copper blocks and oxidized cut copper for the oxidized blocks. So we always know which copper blocks were oxidized from the start. So I'd stop the game, but now let's do a time warp of one hour and see how fast the copper oxidizes. So, after one hour, the isolated pattern is almost fully aged as expected. And yes, the solid layer is terrible, so no progress at all essentially. In the alternating row setup, a bit more than half of the blocks have gone to exposed. For the one out of four blocks, even more. And the solid phase is also progressing well, even though a bit slower than the alternating rows. So we don't see any weathered or oxidized coppers in our mixed setups. They all just went to exposed. But let's simulate another couple of hours and see what happens now. So after three hours total, the solid phase is still terrible. And I'm afraid this won't change anytime soon. The isolated pattern are almost fully aged as expected. But all three mixed patterns have progressed significantly. The pattern where we hand one fresh copper to three oxidized ones is the fastest, of course. A lot of blocks are already converted to oxidized, so give this another hour or so, and we will have a lot of oxidized copper there. With the alternating rows, we have pretty much a mix of exposed and weathered copper, while the solid phase is still mainly exposed copper. So this is quite a bit slower, but we also see some progress. And because this is a random process, we see a few blocks here that block the further conversion of other blocks in the vicinity. And if you want to speed up the process and you happen to come along after three hours, then you could just remove these blocks here and replace them with exposed or weathered blocks. But no cheating here, we leave them as they are. So let's simulate another three hours, bringing us up to a total of six hours. The one out of four is almost completely oxidized, one block left. The alternating row setup is also almost completely oxidized. We have 554 oxidized copper, only 60 weathered copper and one exposed copper. And this can happen in true randomness. You can stand there a real time day and after this day maybe one block of copper is still fresh and not oxidized at all. But this will happen very, very rarely. If you lay out large faces, so basically, after 6 hours, 90% of the copper is fully oxidized and this is also what you can expect. Here, no progress there. But here, the solid phase also no looks very nice. Half of it is still weathered, but about half is already fully oxidized. And give it another hour or two. And we also have this to about 90% oxidized. So the takeaway from this experiment is, if we mix oxidized copper with fresh copper in equal parts, we will oxidize most copper within 6 to 8 hours, depending if we use this setup here or this setup face on face here. It's indeed to be expected that this alternating row setup is a bit faster, as we'll see in a moment when we do a bit of maths. Now here this took 4 hours. We do have a speed gain, but we also used only half of the copper compared to the alternating rows. I also experimented a bit with stacked setups like this, but I didn't see any improvement. In fact, this was significantly worse. So of course you can stack them on top of each other, but I recommend to leave a four block gap. And in my book, six or even eight hours oxidization are perfectly fine. 
I mean, I will age the copper in the vicinity of either my base or my copper farm, so I will spend a lot of time there. And once the copper is oxidized, it doesn't cause any lag. So there's no reason to stash it away in an unloaded chunk. And if I work on my base or grind in my copper farm, 5, 6 or even 8 hours are really not that long. Of course you need to start out, so you need some oxidized copper blocks to begin with. So I recommend to space out maybe 2, 3 or 4 stacks of copper depending on how fast and how many you want to age in this 5x5 pattern. Come back after 60 or maybe 90 minutes, collect all of the oxidized copper blocks and then let's say we have two stacks of oxidized copper, then we can just start laying them out in rows, like this. Just alternate. And this works even if we have some elevation changes, say a meadows biome. So you can do just something like this. This could be a hair slower, but not by much. And once you're done, you have again to wait about six hours. And then pretty much all of this will have oxidized to oxidized copper. And the next time you can convert 4 stacks, the next time you can convert 8 stacks, and so on. In each iteration you will almost double the amount of coppers that you can age. And if you prefer to work with full faces, you can just place another layer on here. And then you will have to wait about 8 hours. However, if you have come so far, don't stack 2 faces of copper on these, because this will take a very long time. Once you have a second layer made, you will need to collect these blocks and then replace them with fresh blocker for the next aging cycle. Or what's also valid, of course, is to stack one more layer. And this will be even a bit faster than the one layer on one layer, of course. Now, if you have some weathered copper or some exposed copper, just lump it in with the normal copper, like so. And you've got the perfect formula for aging copper. So let's do a tiny bit of maths. And the goal is really to produce charts like this, where you can see at which time most of the copper blocks are in which state. So again, by vicinity, I mean the blocks that have a distance of four in this taxi cap metric. So in this case, the vicinity of this copper block in the middle would all be the yellow glass blocks here. So what are the rules for copper oxidization? And there's a number of steps. And if any of them fails, the copper will not oxidize. So first, the block must be hit by a random tick. On average, every 6 to 8 seconds, a block will be hit. Then comes a random check. We will proceed with a random number. And in this context, random number is a random number between 0 and 1. So if this random number is smaller than 64 divided by 1125. So this is about a 5.7% chance. On average, we need 20 minutes to get past step 2. Now, proceed with no block with lower oxidization state as in the vicinity. If we want to oxidize this block here, in the five block vicinity we have one block that is not oxidized. And of course in the world download I use wax blocks because I don't want the blocks to oxidize while I explain. In practice we count only regular blocks, not wax blocks. So if there's one block of oxidized copper in the vicinity, this block can never age. We will have to oxidize this block first. So that's rule three. Then rule four, if the block we're trying to oxidize is weathered or exposed, then we'll proceed with a 75% chance. So there's a 25% chance that we abort. Now point five is the one where we have to calculate a bit. And this is the relevant factor why these blocks age so much, so much faster than these one, ones here. And these are again so much faster than a solid phase. First, we count the number of blocks with a higher oxidization state in this diamond here. And let's call this H. And let S be the number of blocks with the same oxidization state, again, in the structure. But we won't count this block here that we tried to oxidize. And then we calculate a number, which is H plus 1 divided by H plus S plus 1. And we will succeed if a random number is smaller than this number squared. Let's do an example. This is the alternate rows pattern that I like very much. Let's say our random tick hits this block. Then we start counting and we will find that H is 20 and S is 20. So our number C is 21 divided by 41 and our chance to succeed is about 26%. If we hit an isolated block and everything else checks out, this chance would be 100%. So this block has roughly a fourth of a chance than an isolated block. However, 
we have in this area 21 blocks and not just one block. So we'll have a lot higher density and the chance is not that bad. And what's even better, this chance goes up. Now let's say we have hit a few blocks and oxidized a few blocks, like so. We have six blocks that went to exposed. Then suddenly our number H of the blocks with a higher oxidization state went up to 26 and the block with the same oxidization state, S, went down to 14. And now our chance is 26 divided by 41 and the square is 43%. Now let's say we have aged a few more blocks. So in this case we are down to 10 copper blocks in the vicinity plus this one, and we have 30 blocks of higher oxidization state and our chance is already at 57%. So you see, the more blocks we advance a stage, the higher the chances for the blocks that haven't yet oxidized, that they will age. However, none of those will go past exposed. None of them can become weathered because we still have this unoxidized copper blocks here. So let's look at the graph describing this. I dusted off some long forgotten programming skills and simulated copper progression for different patterns. All of these were simulated for a 100 by 100 area. Now let's first have a look for the isolated blocks. These blocks spaced out in a 5 by 5 pattern. On the left you see the number of blocks, while at the bottom you see the minute. And the yellow line is the number of fully oxidized blocks. It reaches half level after about an hour and almost 90% of the two hours. 90% of the blocks are oxidized after two hours. But we are talking about only 400 blocks in a 100 by 100 area. Next, here's the graph for my alternating row setup. In this case, we have 5,000 copper blocks instead of 400, and we see a dynamic that is pretty much expected. The conversion to exposed blocks is reasonably fast. After about one hour, we have converted 4,000 blocks to exposed state, but the remaining 1,000 blocks are almost all fresh. Then we have a slow plateau and for about one hour, where not a lot happens, we stay at about 4000 exposed blocks, but the remaining blocks slowly shift from fresh to exposed and some exposed blocks to weathered. After a bit less than two hours, we see the speed of conversion picking up and within the next hours, most of the exposed blocks will go to weathered. This starts to happen if we have very few fresh blocks left. Then we see another plateau and after four hours, the last conversion to oxidized will pick up speed. It's slower because there will be a few stragglers left. But after five to six hours we're done, most of the blocks will have converted to oxidized. If we look at the solid phase on a row of oxidized copper, we see that we don't have quite the one-to-one -one ratio that we had here, because we have 41 total blocks in the middle layer and only 25 blocks in the layer below. So in this case, our conversion chance equals about 15.5% which is a step down from the 26% in the alternating row setup. But here as well, the chance will go up once we see some blocks starting to oxidize. But the slower start is responsible for the setup taking more like eight hours. But we're oxidizing 10,000 blocks at once and not only 5,000. We can remedy this by adding even more oxidized blocks, two solid layers of oxidized blocks and one solid layer of fresh blocks. In this case, we add another 13 blocks here in the bottom which brings the total values up to 38 blocks at the higher oxidized state and 40 blocks at the same oxidized state, giving 24% and almost the same chance as the oxidized row setup. So let's quickly have a look at these graphs. Here it takes between six and seven hours to fully oxidize most of the copper. And let's also have a look at the disastrous case of a solid copper layer without any oxidized blocks and there you see we only have a 0.06% chance or 1 in 1600 chance that any given block oxidizes. So it will take a long long time until the very first block oxidizes and so the graph of the solid layer doesn't look very promising. So you have a few patterns to choose from but in any case even without complicated machines, it's not too difficult to oxidize a few shulker boxes of copper blocks. It's still an interesting question to think about machines that can do this. As I mentioned, cubic meter did one of them, but that's a topic for another day. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment if you have any questions and leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.